to the MMA Fan Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Stu and Blake. Hello and welcome to the MMA Fan Show. I am Blake Harrison and joining me as always is Stuart Hwethen. They get more and more elaborate each time you do it. I just love your name. Thanks, mate. Um, Thanks, mate. But this is not our first episode that we're recording today. We've already recorded our fight announcements episode where we were talking about Nganu Joshua, uh, Benoit Saint-Denis versus Dustin Poirier, which is my personal favourite, but also Masvidal Diaz in a potential boxing match and Oliveira Sarukian. Yes. So we've got an an episode talking about all of those announcements where we just recorded. So hopefully this is coming your way either just before or just after that has has come out. So that'll either be coming up very very soon or it's already out so go but and you, we watch won't need it. to worry because you've all subscribed yeah so, so you it's all gonna have just, you're gonna know right, anyway right hey mm. we know we see you anyway uh this episode is sort of a little fun bit of uh UFC 300 headliner matchmaking episode. So we've Mm -hmm. each picked three potential headliners for UFC 300 that you know mine, but I don't know yours. Yeah. So I am expecting some, let's be honest, some clangers. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Mine, I guess two of mine are quite wild, but that, I just thought, you know what, in a world where anything can happen for 300, I'm thinking I'm going to throw some, some wild ones in there. One I think is legit. Uh, to a kind of a, a, a bit out there. And the reason right. I know Blake's is I do the little graphics behind the, uh, the, the uh, if you're watching this, you can see sort of, of our matchup. So I know his, but like I say, he doesn't know mine. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. Right. So let's get straight into it. We might also mention a few, because I took some screen grabs of some other, some fan uh, ideas for UFC 300 headliners, some of which... I am uh, aligned with, and you'll see in a minute. But let's start, and um, we can pull up the uh, the image. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see images of these fights coming up that Stu will do in a minute. But are you happy with me to go first? Do you know what? I think... Yeah, do it, do it, do it. Let's go for it. Why, what were you going to say? No, no. No, you have to turn it off. I was going to take oh, him on a journey. God. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake, Stu. You were on your phone. You were distracted. You were on your phone. What were you doing on your phone that was so important that it's now ruined the big reveal? I was <laughs> I was trying to find a stat, but don't worry about it. Don't worry oh, about it. Oh, my God. <sighs> right, well, if you're watching this on YouTube, you may have seen, unless... Our wonderful some Jamie, cutting. some clever editing has maybe prevented you from seeing the big thing, but maybe they have to see it now because right. you've fucked that up royally, didn't you, Stu Whiffin? <laughs> anyway, let me take you on a journey. Okay. I'm going to do this down the barrel, all right? Is that what you call it? Down the barrel, mate. That's a technical term. You do right. it down the barrel. Yeah? Oh. I'm teaching you all sorts. Thanks, mate. So Dana White has said that Armand Sarukian versus Oliveira is the number one contender fight and that Islam is injured. So Justin Gaethje, where does that leave him? What's he doing? Is he lined up to be the next guy fighting number one contender? Is, is, is Ar- the winner of Armin versus Oliveira going to leapfrog Justin Gaethje? We don't know. So maybe Justin Gaethje has been overlooked for the lightweight title. Or maybe Dana White has said, Justin, let me sweeten the pot for you. While Islam is slightly injured, we've got this number one contender fight going on, but you're my guy. Mm. And the way to make you, my guy, is you defend your BMF title at UFC 300 against Max Holloway, who steps up in weight. What are we thinking? I mean, I'd love it. It'd be a great fight, wouldn't it? It's not got the star power of, you know, big names returning. Do you not think... No, I, I don't think it's got like the you know the Izzy Connor, Sean O'Malley, or the other fighters we might talk I, I, about I, 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 that, that, that could come back I, to I the think, UFC. I think Gaethje's bigger than Izzy. What? I think Gaethje. More fans want to watch Gaethje fight than I Izzy. I think more hardcore fans like Gaethje mm. as a fighter because he's all action. But I think Izzy. I mean, you have to check their social media followings and stuff like that. I bet Izzy's surpasses Gaethje. I mean, Gaethje's Izzy's, not going to be Mr. Social Media, is he? No, but that's part of popularity, is it? And stardom <laughs> is how many people care about you. Mm. And I don't think. There's a lot of fans that love Gaethje because of his fights yeah. and his fight style. I don't think they are on the bandwagon like 
people would be for, for, for Izzy. I don't I think individuals, you, I like, personally, I'd probably rather watch a Justin Gaethje fight, but I do think that Izzy has a certain crossover stardom to him. Like, wasn't he sponsored by Puma a little while ago or something like that? Like, mm. that's, you know, that's, that's the kind of level that Izzy's got. So, but I think for casual fans and for um, hardcores alike, yeah. this is just delightful. Mm. It is just... This is what you wait for, you know, when you, you're having, you're having uh, a nice meal out. This is, this is the main course, dessert, everything. This, this is it all. This is violence. It is two very likable fighters. It's people that never back down. It's people that are going to put on a fight of the night performance every single time. Mm. And for me, that is why it could potentially headline UFC 300. It also doesn't hold up any divisions necessarily. If Islam is injured, Justin's here. There's potential number one contenders already sorted. Max is not getting a title shot down at featherweight anytime soon. He's, he has fought at lightweight as well. It's not just out of the blue. If you're a newer fan, you may not have remembered that Max fought Dustin Poirier at lightweight. I think this could be an absolutely classic fight. Yeah, I'm loving this. Like when, when you sent this one over first, I was like, this would be fantastic. I mean, both them fighters, I'm huge fans of. Um, I'm really interested in where Max's career goes. On the on the um, prediction show, I predicted that he's going to be the champ at the end of the year. Yes, you know, at I, featherweight. At featherweight, yeah. I think he beats... Uh, unfortunately, I did say that Tapuria was going to beat um, Volk and then I thought that Max would beat, comfortably, would beat Ilya comfortably. Um, I love what a Max year Holloway. for Max Holloway it could be. Oh, it could Imagine be. if he won the BMF be. belt at UFC 300 and then dropped back down to featherweight to face Tapuria and beat him and was the BMF and featherweight champ at the same time. Who deserves to be the BMF? It's Max Holloway. Uh, it, hey, he may, he. there's a credit, a, a, a certain, um, is it creditation or whatever that you need to be a BMF yeah. in my book? You, you know, you, not, not just any good fighter can be a BMF. There's yeah. a special type of fighter that becomes a BMF. Max encapsulates... Whatever boxes you got to tick. Yes, Max does that. Mm. So, yeah, that was my first pick for you. And you're in. Yeah, you're oh, 100%. I love this. Is, is, you think it's got enough star power? 100%. It's, it, it, this is just like two absolute legends. Right. And, and, you know, obviously neither of them have retired or yeah. spent long time away from, the, you know, the, 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 the octagon. So it's a big return. You could argue we're getting them in their prime, <laughs> which is what you want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. I love it. Great. Well, there you go. That went well for me. Mm -hmm. right, what's your first... <laughs> you're saying that like you're worried about your pick. Oh! <laughs> so for anyone listening, Stu has gone for Ronda Rousey making a return mm -hmm. against Misha Tate. Mm. I was wondering whether you would pick a return for Ronda. There's rumours. There's rumours. There's rumours. And and I think. Do you want to sell us on it? Or, well, or do you think it sells itself? <laughs> it sells itself because the history is ridiculous, right? Yeah. Like there's they, beef. There was this real beef. Insane levels of beef. Um, Ronda's, you know, snapped her arm. She's 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 bashed her up enough times. Now we've seen Ronda, you know, retire from the UFC a long time ago. Uh, did she ever officially retire? Who Ronda? Yeah. I don't know. She know, she had that weird thing of like after she got beat by Nunes, and even in the lead up to the Nunes fight, she was like doing no media. Yeah. She was kind of just yeah, it was a strange one. Though. But we've seen her wrestling. I mean, I haven't. I don't watch wrestling. The, the WWE stuff. But, yeah, yeah. But so she's she's in good nick, and uh, and so what we've seen as well last time at Misha Tate's looking decent. Do you um, think this would happen at bantamweight, or could it be for a vacant featherweight belt? Oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's not the belt it's for. I think there should be a female BMF belt. Oh, God. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the beef between these two. And, like, they're both gangster as fuck, right? And I just think, oh, let's make it happen. Misha Tate, Ronda Rousey, UFC 300. For the female BMF belt. Why not? Oh, I didn't think of a vacant belt, though. Oh, well, yeah, the thing is, you're not going to do that, really, because... Uh, Featherweight's just a non-division, isn't it? Yeah. But but if you had Ronda Rousey back as a champ of that, that's sellable, much like uh, mm. what they tried to do when Cyborg first came to the yep. UFC yep. and where Amanda was kind of just carrying that division a little bit. It was a non-division, but there was just fights that you could make with a belt on the line with an absolute star. 
as champ. And maybe newer fans don't remember just how big a star Ronda Rousey was. I mean, she was phenomenal. There was that stretch where she did four fights and the, the total time of, of those fights was about two minutes. She had four title defences and the total amount of time she'd spent in the cage over those four fights was about two minutes. It was unbelievable what she was doing to these women. And she was a crossover star. She was on like the Ellen show mm-hmm. and stuff like that. She wasn't just like, oh, MMA fans like her. She crossed over into movies, TV, all sorts. She- MMA fans weren't seeing women in the octagon. Until Ronda. Until Ronda. That, that's the whole... That Ronda is the reason that, that women's MMA is in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Because it was happening... I'm assuming it was in Victor, but I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. where it was that she was champion previously. Dana had always said, we're not going to have women in the UFC. And then Ronda comes on and he's like, this woman is incredibly mar- marketable. She's an absolute killer in the cage. We're now going to do women's MMA. So... <sighs> Does it, can it headline UFC? It would be massive. Ronda Rousey. Of course be it would headline. It would be massive. Oh, I think there'd be a lot of people turning their nose up at this. Right. And I felt like maybe I would be one of them, but I'm seeing it in front of me on the big screen, the picture of Ronda and the picture of Misha. And I'm sort of all in. <laughs> I'm sort I love of all in. it. Don't get me wrong. There needs to be a lot of other fights, which there will I be. I don't see it. In, in reality, I don't see the The closer we get to it, I don't see this one happening. No. Um, but in a world where I could, you know, I could play matchmaker, I, I think it's a good opportunity. You know, we, we spoke about the fact that Misha Tate could potentially get a shot. You know, it's not that far off. Yeah. And uh, and I just think, how many people are we excited to watch Misha Tate fight? Holly Holm, that's maybe about... I would I would love to see the Holly Holm rematch with Misha Tate. That's what I'd like to see. It wouldn't be as good as watching her fight Ronda Rousey again, would it? No, it Imagine wouldn't. the press. It It'd wouldn't. be amazing. It wouldn't. Ronda's back and who's she fighting? No one wants to see her fight like the champs or anything. They want to see her fight Misha or Holly, but yeah. Misha, because the, it's just so much beef there. Oh, for, for Ronda, I'd rather see her fight Misha than Holly. For, for Misha... I would like to see her fight Holly, but I also I would love to see this as well. Do you know what? You've won me round. You've <laughs> won it. me round. I would like to... If it was headlining the UFC 300, it would be... There would be a weirdness to it. I don't know what I could put my finger on, but I would I would watch it. And and I'm looking at it and I'm going, yeah, go on then. Give it to me. Uh, great. Right. I won't click the image change Don't yet. click the image just yet. So Are I'm you going to go down the pipe again I'm on the barrel or whatever barrel, it's called? I'm going to go down the barrel, mate. Down the barrel. So... We have a captivating storyline. Crosses over all of combat sports. Well, not all, but some. It should have already been made, this mm-hmm. fight. The rematch. The completion of a trilogy. Mm-hmm. They're one and one. A belt would be on the line, and it involves one of the biggest stars in the sport today. Mm-hmm. Israel Adesanya comes back, mm-hmm. and he fights Alex Poitain. Pereira for the light heavyweight belt. We need a conclusion to the trilogy. Is he wanted time off? Maybe he'd be brought back too early to be on this one, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if Izzy in some way for the middleweight or light heavyweight belt is involved in UFC 300. I, I really think it could happen. Um, this was also a big pick with the fans. A lot of people messaging in on, on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. They were big on Izzy Pereira three. Um, I think Izzy would have big old bowls to take this fight at light heavyweight mm-hmm. because he wouldn't have had the time to build up properly, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Um, and Alex Pereira just just cracks. I know Izzy flatlined him in, in the, the last fight, but up until that moment, it looked like Pereira was, you know, pushing him up against the fence, doing all the right things, making it a, a kind of reenactment of that last round in their first fight in MMA. Um so I think it would be a lot for Izzy, but these are the kind of things that I think motivate Izzy. Izzy loves that whole kung fu movie, anime type stuff. And I think for the legacy and the story of Israel Adesanya to headline UFC 300 against his greatest nemesis and win that belt to become a two-division champion against his old rival in spectacular fashion on the biggest stage of them all is something that I think he'd find difficult to turn down. So that's why I think Izzy Pereira three is a great UFC 300 headliner. I, I, I know all the reasons that you've just said are great reasons. Go on. I just don't see Izzy 
fancy in light heavyweight. Not for, but his legacy would, you, would you just do so much for him to be a two division champ. You don't think he'd want that? I think he would. I think he's got unfinished business there. I just don't. I think if he does it, he should build up properly, which he didn't do for the Jan Blachowicz fight, and he should learn from that. However, the reason he got beaten in the Jan Blachowicz fight is because Blachowicz went, "I'm bigger than you. I'm just going to take you down." Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen with Pereira. Do you think that is he saying he'll have that trumps? Anyone in that light heavyweight division? Hell yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I want to see the Jamal Hill Pereira fight. Mm -hmm. I would watch a rematch with Yiri. If Rakic beats Yiri, I would watch Rakic versus Pereira. There's lots of fights at light heavyweight that will be really, really good. But Izzy trumps all of them and by a country mile as well. Mm. What's interesting here? What are you looking up on your phone now? I've made a note. You making? You got diary? You got appointments? You're late for or something? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is going on? Here? So I've made a note. Go on. To change my artwork, and it's it's there, and I'm, and I'm going to change. Oh, I don't know. I'll, when I get to my last pick, that's the one that I think that I was going to change. Go on. And so I'm going right. to wait until we get there. But focusing on this. Yeah. Are you in? Are you out? I'm, are you I'm, shaking it all about? What are you doing? I mean, I mean, but. Um, I, I, I think Pereira takes it. Like um, I think he's way more comfortable at that weight. I mean, he's a beast anyway, and and I don't know. You can't write off Izzy. No, nope. but uh, and and I love the fact that. But do we want to see it again? I know. Yes, that we need the completion of the trilogy. Of course, we want to see it again. And it's not like the first two fights were rubbish. They were great fights. Mm. There, there, there is, mm. yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. Uh, it's it makes a lot of sense. It's a big, big fight, and mm, yeah. No, I, I'm 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 on board, mate. I'm on board. Right. Okay, you're on board. Right. Do your next one. I've got some kind of fan suggestions that I wanted to go through, but I might wait until some of them are some of ours are more are done. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but hit me with yours. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to explain to the uh, listeners that haven't got YouTube what uh, what we're looking at here? Nathan Diaz versus GSP. Oh, is this a 170, I guess? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, you've got a picture up here of GSP with the belt. I'm like, he won't be having a belt in this. Well, I couldn't find a high-res uh, picture of, uh, of him without fair, the belt. Fair enough. It and, does look uh, lovely. But that belt suits him, man. Uh, well, look, we just said on our fight announcement show, we're talking about the fact that Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal might be boxing might in be. March. Mm -hmm. It's not 100% confirmed. Why do you think that is? Diaz did put out a tweet recently being like, um, I was supposed to headline UFC 200. It didn't happen, but UFC 300 would be better. So, mm -hmm. but would GSP come back? I don't think GSP's ever coming back. If GSP comes back... And, he, I, and Nate Diaz at UFC 300. Oh, yes, please. I don't think I'm into it. Oh, you fool. I just uh, don't, I just, yeah, I just don't. It's totally winnable for GSP. Yeah, but I don't think it's winnable for Nate. I don't. Yeah, but Nate's the name. Nate's going to get all of the attention. Who's bigger? Like, who could top that other than Connor? Like, Diaz. The name Diaz does, does, is huge. Does Nate want to go back to the UFC and earn less for an MMA fight than what he would for, like, no, a boxing I, fight? Like, I, I, I don't know. PFL I don't know. apparently have got 10 to 15 million on the table for him to do an MMA fight against uh, Jake Paul. Is he really interested in fighting GSP? He, 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 can, he can do that. I think, I think there'd be great money... Fighting GSP headlining UFC 300 would I think he'd make more money than what Jorge's likely to pay him at Gamebred. I don't know if Gamebred got mega dollars. Well, the thing with the Gamebred thing is it would be a co pro between Gamebred and Real Fight Inc., which is Nate's production right. Real fight, uh, fight company. So, so I think that makes a difference there. Mm. Because he'd get all that pay per view or like split 50 50 pay per view revenue mm -hmm. with, with, with Jorge, which might tally up as more than what he would get mm. for whatever deal the UFC would give him because they certainly ain't giving him 50 50. Right. Um, shut your eyes, right? Shut your eyes. I don't. Right, shut go your on, eyes. Take me on a journey. Right. Here we go. Yep. Eyes are shut. All right. It's 
four o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> You've been waiting up all night, right? Yeah. And all of this a sudden, sounds slightly sensual. I don't know what's the, happening. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm concerned. You're sitting there. You got a couple of. You've had a couple of beers, and then all of a sudden, the lights go down, and out comes George Saint Pierre. He's in that octagon. Everyone is like, GSP is in the octagon. Lights go down again. Out comes Nate Diaz over his shoulder. Nick Diaz walking in with him. The beef between Nick and George, great. And then all of the stuff, the media stuff leading up to it, and then all of a sudden, Buffer introduces Nate Diaz versus George St. Pierre. Can you just imagine the furore? I I just think you're wrong. It's way better than Izzy Pereira. It's really not. It is. It's really not, and I'll tell you why. What's going Saint- to get the pay-per-views? No, I'll tell you why. George St. Pierre is not going to sell this fight in the manner that you would want a fight sold. Nate Diaz is not going to be disrespectful to George St. Pierre. Pereira's not. So, yeah, Pereira just needs to sit there stony-faced, and that does it. That does all of does it. Does it, though? Yeah, it does. And the trilogy does it. The history does it. There's no history here. This is just... What, between a, a Diaz and a, and a St. Pierre? No, not really. Oh. Uh, no, no. And it, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just not doing it for me. I'm not, I'm not interested in... I don't think the fight would be a good fight. I don't think the press stuff leading up to it would be great. Mm. I just... I, sure, it's bringing back GSP and sure, it's bringing back Nate Diaz. Uh, I just... I'm not... Just not overly bothered. Right. Well, let us know what you lot think. Am I being, am I off my head here? Because, I don't know, I'd like to get your thoughts on, would you like to see George St. Pierre versus Nathan Diaz headlining UFC 300? Let us know. Get commenting. Right, we've got one more pick each. Mm -hmm. So, my final pick Mm -hmm. is a little bit more out there. I know you know what it is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's a bit more out there. But let me take you on a journey. A huge crossover star returns. This man pulls in audiences that only one or two people have ever been able to pull in in the world of MMA, maybe in the world of combat sports. He's a hired gun, a mercenary. (laughs) If the check is big enough, he will be there. Mm. He's bailed the UFC out of these jams before. He's fought at UFC 100. He's fought at UFC 200. Yes, the beast is back. Brock Lesnar returns for UFC 300 against the man he was supposed to fight a few years ago. A guy the UFC loves, a guy that retired, but would come back for this fight only. No fight camps needed. Definitely no weight cuts needed. Off the sofa and on into the cage. Steps one, Daniel DC Cormier <laughs> to take on Brock Lesnar in just a fight for the ages. Two behemoths, titans of the world, going against each other to headline UFC 300. And not to mention, there's history here. Brock stepped into the cage. Oh, that was the U- most embarrassing thing no, I've ever great. seen I in the, the octagon. Clip. Have you got not- the clip? Oh, I've completely forgot, you forgot to put the it clip. in. It's so embarrassing. We were, no, it's not. It's a great clip. Go and find it. Stu was supposed to put it up. Maybe we'll put it on our socials. But um, Brock pushes DC in the cage after DC beat Stipe mm. for, to win the heavyweight belt mm. at UFC 226. Um, yeah. There's no belt needed for this. Mm. There's no holding up any divisions mm. or anything like that. It's just two old guys coming back. Big money. Huge pay-per-view numbers. This is the fight to headline UFC 300. Definitely ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely uh, ain't. Look, What's I'm, wrong with it? I'm not the biggest Brock fan, right? And I know that all of you... He's got a sword tattooed on his chest, no, mate. I know. Look I know. Look at of him. And like... Imagine how massive DC will be. He's just come off the sofa. This is him in peak physical <laughs> performance. It'll be huge. No 265 weight cut. It's a 300 pound just weight limit. Just whatever. Super heavyweights. But he's Brock in his 60s now. How old is he? Uh, Mid 40s. Like, I'm, I'm not They're both interested. Probably a similar age. I know you bloody wrestling nerds love Brock, but like, <laughs> I never really was a fan. Um, oh, I've never been a fan of Daniel Cormier. What? Now that upsets me. I love DC. Why? He was great. He was, he was good in the Octagon, but like, he just didn't, he's not got star quality. 
I like him. He wanted star quality I mean, and he tried so hard and it just didn't work. But he presents loads of random stuff. He, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's does great well. all that. I, I could see DC presenting like a morning show mm. in America somewhere. Mm. Like, I, don't, I can't remember where he's, he's from, Daniel. It's like, like, like Louisiana. Right. If there was like a good morning Louisiana mm. with some person that's like, you know, I don't know, like, it's like the morning shows, like, mm. you know, the, the, the Louisiana equivalent of a mm. Holly Willoughby mm. and Daniel Cormier presenting the morning. That's what you want to wake up. Hi, I'm Jen Watson. And I'm tomorrow. <laughs> and on this morning show, I've got my guy DC with me. Hey, Hello. Jen. Just shuffling some papers and stuff. No, hey, Jen, no. I'm so excited for today. <laughs> <laughs> we got a great show. There you go. It's brilliant. And then Brock Lesnar's just Brock. These two in the cage. It'd be amazing. Not interested in the slightest. Really? Like, yeah, two fighters that I'm not, not into. Um, like, don't get me wrong. I always used to watch them fight. I've never been... A big fan of Brock Lesnar. I just don't particularly like him. Um, and DC, I don't know, the desperation to be liked used to really grate me. And don't get me wrong, his record speaks for itself, as does Brock's. Um, I'm not interested in, if fighters are going to come back and fight, George St. Pierre, mate, like, you're going to get an athlete that is in tip top condition constantly. Like, this. Like, but these guys don't need to be in condition. No, Look what, at them. what are they going to do? <laughs> They're just huge men. Like Brock's just going to try and oh, uh, it'd just be oh, just bad dad wrestling. Like I tell you what, your concerns about this fight are legit, and this yeah. is why I left this till last because I didn't <laughs> want to lose all legitimacy <laughs> with the first pick of my fights, but. Of all the five fights that we have suggested so far, mm -hmm. I think that the unfortunate truth mm. is that this does way more pay-per-view buys mm -hmm. than any of the fights either of us has suggested so far. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, but because yeah. Brock, well, it will be like Brock's back. It's bigger yeah. than Ronda's back. Yeah, and like, and it's probably bigger than George St Pierre's back because because of the wrestling because of the WWE stuff. Yeah, and for like, sure. and and he, you know, he he he's literally huge. Um, They're under the same umbrella now as well, WWE and, and UFC. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the WWE contract situation is with Brock Lesnar, but the fact that they're under that TKO umbrella now, this DC's kind of stuff ego is very easy. Would say yes to this fight, hundred percent. I think it's, it's just his want of a payday. Mm. I mean, that would just be huge. Yeah, I mean, I don't see it happening. In a million years. No, I, I doubt it'll happen, but it's fun. <laughs> like, I, I would really love this fight. I'd be so into it. I'd be there with my popcorn <laughs> at 5 a.m. going, <laughs> yes, let's go. This fight is nuts. Did you see um, uh, a, a bit of news that dropped last night that Jim Miller has started a campaign? Uh, oh, to be Jim fucking Miller. To get Bruce to introduce him as Jim fucking Miller. That'd be amazing. Oh, that'd be so good. But do you know what? Anyone else, if Danny Dyer was introducing it, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Jim fucking Miller. But like Bruce, I can't imagine how that had sound. I think it'd be great. <laughs> Jim fucking <laughs> Miller. Now I can hear it. Yeah. Um, oh, fantastic. Um, all right. Well, look. Last, so you're you're not in. This is the one of mine that you're not no, you're not happy with. No, because I think people are. I think people will, you know disagree with you. Okay. you Let us know. Let us know. Right. So my last one is the one that I, I got up the other morning and put a message to myself on my phone to change the artwork. Okay. And did you change the artwork? No. Oh, but God. I will tell you. Okay. All right. I'm worried. What's happening? Oh. <gasps> Oh, <laughs> so you haven't changed your work. So have you had a change? So what I'm looking at right now is Israel Adesanya against Hamzat Shemaev. What are your initial thoughts on this? My initial thoughts are: I would love to see this fight. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely love to see this fight at middleweight. My problem with it is there's no belt involved. That's the main issue. And I'm assuming we've got Zhang Weili. Versus Yan Jonan for the strawweight belt, already mm -hmm. announced for UFC 300. They haven't officially announced Bilal versus Leon for the welterweight mm -hmm. belt, but I think that is coming. Does this non-title fight leapfrog those as a headliner? I don't think it does. It's bigger. It is bigger, but I just think 
What you do when you do that is you go, our belts mean nothing. Well, Other than Connor, I don't think you can do that. If you bring back Brock or Ronda, I can see why that would headline. Just because yes. it's bigger than a belt, because it's yeah. it's just an absolute, like, G yeah. of the game coming back. Yeah. This isn't anyone returning. This is just a fucking great fight. Yeah. And See, the, the Gaethje Holloway had the BMF belt. It had a belt. Yeah. So that's why it headlines. Mm-hmm. This without a belt... I don't think can headline. But as a fight, Jesus Christ, take my money. I want to see this fight. But you reckon you were going to change the artwork. So you really, this is your kind of second choice. Yeah. What should this fight have actually been? I'll show you. Well, you might have to tell me, mate. <laughs> uh, no, let me just find it because I don't... I'll... I'll, I'll fill this dead air while you go Sorry. through your phone, shall I? <laughs> shocking, isn't but it? I, I do think that this is a phenomenal... I mean, Hamzat Shemaya versus Adesanya, that is one of the best number one contender fights you'll ever find, ever. Oh, God. What you've shown me is is just not... No, no. Right, let's just tell them. Go on, just in our... Pereira but versus Jamal Hill. No. Why not? It's not... It's not Izzy, and Jamal Hill's not anywhere near the star that, that Izzy is. But I think that's a really exciting fight. It's a very exciting fight. It can headline other cards and do well. But it's not as is big as Kanzat versus Izzy. No, it's not. But there's it's no not. belt. But there's no belt. Yeah, exactly. That's just the conundrum we find ourselves in. I think that star power, Hamzat Shemaya versus Israel Adesanya, is a brilliant headliner for UFC 300. It's fantastic. Mm. But without a belt... I just, I don't know. These are two active guys looking to get the middleweight belt. Should they be headlining UFC 300 without a belt when there's two other belts on the line? I'm not sure. But you say to me, Jamal Hill, Alex Pereira is headlining for the light heavyweight belt. I go, Dana, you were going for ages about like how amazing UFC 300 is going to be and the headliner is Jamal Hill, Alex Pereira. It's theoretically not as big as 299. It's nowhere near as big as 299 mm. for me. So, I don't think that's anywhere so near. So this is kind of... I, I know there's no... But this is the fight that I think is so exciting. And it, it's just the politics of there is no strap attached to it. Mm. But... Pay-per-view numbers. Oh, mate. This does well. Mate. And, like, does that trump? Does that trump it all? I don't know. Is, is, is he going to have to put... Because, to be honest... This is nowhere... This is way, way bigger than Leon Bilal. Yes. Like, because is, we love Leon. Is. You know, he's a yep. UK fighter. But in regards to superstar, I don't think he's there yet. Especially you know? if global pay-per-view buys. Yeah. Yeah, th- th- this would trump that by probably two, three, four times as much. This is what I'm thinking. And, uh, and so... Is Dana White going to go headlining UFC 300, Bilal Mohammed versus Leon Edwards? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that might happen in Abu Dhabi or somewhere. Like, I don't necessarily... Oh, I think it'll be on 300. You think it's going to be... Like... I just think it's going to be the co-main event. Okay. I don't think it's going to headline, but I think it will be at 300. Mm. But yeah, which and... is great for Leon to get those pay-per-view uh, yeah, revenue yeah, 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 yeah. off of that. Yeah, yeah, um, I So, yeah, I love the fight. I love Hamzat V. Izzy. I think it's phenomenal. Mm. I just think if you're Dana, Mick Maynard, the UFC, whatever, I think you're looking at this and going, one of these guys is going to mm. be champ. One mm. of them will be champ. Mm. Whether you, you know, strict. The other thing I think is Israel Adesanya could come back to fight the winner of Strickland DDP if they're going to turn around quick enough. Mm-hmm. Now, DDP turned down a quick turnaround fight. Granted, it was six weeks, which was mm-hmm. mental to fight Izzy. And that's how we got Strickland as a champion. Mm-hmm. Maybe with a little bit more time, especially if he dispatches with Strickland early and he's the champ. And it's like, mate, you can headline 300 here. He would take that fight on a short notice period. Uh, Strickland, I think, is just a madman. And say what you want about him as a human being. I know he's been through an awful lot. He still comes out with some really horrible stuff. But regardless of that, as a fighter, he's game as hell. And I think he will fight a week after UFC 297 if you say to him that's what you want him to do. So I think he would definitely turn around quickly to rematch Izzy if Izzy came back. So that's a possibility as well, where Izzy kind of steps in and, and kind of leads 300 as a, as a title challenger. Um, but I think the UFC, it would make sense for them to go, let's try and get Izzy the belt or try and get Hams at the belt, whichever way round it works against either Drickus or Strickland. And then we get Izzy versus Hamzat for the middleweight strap, and mm. that will sell, and that will do very, very well. 
So I'm I'm in on the fight. Mm. I just don't think he can headline mm. 300. But it, look, what other belts are on the line? That I guess your first pick is probably the one. What Gaethje Holloway? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think it, the reason we haven't brought up Islam Makachev's name is because I think. Uh, is it Ramadan? It's Ramadan. He would have to, I think Ramadan finishes just before 300, but it means he'd have to do his training camp all through Ramadan. Now, Bilal uh, is Muslim as well and, uh, you know, practices, uh, I don't know if practicing Ramadan is the right uh, turn of phrase, but uh, he will be uh, in Ramadan, but I think he has less of a leg to stand on in terms of turning down title fights. Bilal's been, as we said, there's that club, Leon Edwards was in it, Bilal's in it now, Mirab's in it now, and Kalaev, that are just these sad guys kind of that have earned title shots that are just not getting them. Sad guys. Sad guys. <laughs> they, are, they probably are a bit sad. If you ask them deep down, they're like, yeah, I'm a bit sad about it. Um, so that's what I mean by that. Um, but yeah, and I think that's true. I think, you know, they, they should be getting title shots. They're not going to get them anytime mm-hmm. soon, except maybe Bilal is now. So he can't turn it down. If Bilal turns down a fight against Leon Edwards at UFC 300, I tell you now, Shavkat's going to leap him. Islam might step up and leap him. The winner of Conor Chandler could leap him. He has to say yes. Mm. So that's why I think he would fight, even though he'd have to train for Ramadan. Um, so, yeah, the reason we haven't brought, that's the reason we haven't brought up Makachev, so I don't think he'll be fighting at UFC 300. And there's not, there's not much left, as you say. There's, there's not many times. To- I mean, we haven't mentioned Tom Aspinall, who could defend an interim belt, but does an interim belt headline UFC 300? Do we really want to see Tom headline 300 against Cyril Garn? I don't think so. I want to see him fight Cyril. I mean, like... But I don't... I, I'm not, not to headline desperate for that. I think it's a very winnable fight for Tom. Um, what we've seen is, is Tom really starting to sort of throw some words out there to, to get that fight with, with, with John Jones. Yeah. And, and John Jones, he's biting. And yeah, uh, there's lots of back and forth. like it, does he? <laughs> no, and, like, and I think Tom's doing the right thing. He's, he's, yeah. he's you know, he's... he's He's the interim champ. He should fight the champ. Yeah. And, uh, and he's not wrong either. A lot no, of what not he's at saying all. when he's talking, like some people might think he's being disrespectful to Stipe, but the bottom line is he's not wrong. Yeah. Like it has been it will be like four years or something like that since Stipe's fought if they fight in November mm. of this year or something like that. He's like 41 or, or it's just yes, he's the most winningest heavyweight in UFC history. Some people think he's the greatest UFC heavyweight ever. Sure. But does beating him now, this version of him now, really do much for your legacy, John Jones? I think I it's just think so. he, he wants to be the greatest light heavyweight and he wants to start beating the greatest heavyweight. Yeah. And he wants that payday. And then I think we'll probably just see him say bye bye. Because he, I, I don't think he's going to want the young smoke of, of, of an Aspinall or a, or a, a Pavlovich. You know, I, I don't think he's going to really sort of fancy them, them fights at the moment. Um, in terms of his legacy, if John Jones were to beat Tom Aspinall, there's just never a question about whether he's the greatest of all time for me. Because I do think Aspinall's the best heavyweight in the world at the moment. Mm-hmm. If John Jones could beat Tom Aspinall, that would be so huge. Mm-hmm. I just think all bets are off. Forget GSP, forget Demetrius Johnson, forget Anderson Silva, forget Khabib, forget whoever you want. It is John Jones, despite some of the asterisks around his wins and performance-enhancing drugs and all that kind of stuff. Despite that, I, I think you just go, ah, he's, he's the guy. I think most people think that anyway. I think they do. But if he avoids Tom and goes for Stipe instead, which is, I think he will do, oh, it just, it's like a what-if moment, isn't it? But yeah, but like, you know, the Francis fight's never going to happen. That would have been fantastic. Oh, that right? would have made a difference, yeah. And, uh, and so basically, it's like if he's having a look at the situation, he must just think... I just want to tick the box of saying mm. everybody thinks he's the greatest heavyweight. I'm going to beat him, mm. and uh, and then uh, I've got that scalp as well. And I think that's that's how he thinks his legacy is going to look better. I think by fighting Tom, he could lose. Mm-hmm. Does he want his last fight to be a loss against you know an interim champ, or does he want to just go? I retire with the belt, undefeated, well, like yeah. well the. We and want. he'll make more money, I'd imagine, yeah. fighting Stipe. Absolutely. And I, and I think he retires then, hopefully. I know you said you just think he's just going to sit there with a belt and just wait and see Who what knows? happens. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't surprise me with John Jones. But I don't know. I think beat Stipe if you need to. 
Um, we're writing off Stipe here. Yeah? Mm. Like, beat Stipe. I think it's fair to. I, don't, I, I, I had zero interest in the fight, when, uh, Jones versus Stipe fight, when it was first announced. I had yeah. Zero interest. Uh, if Stipe wanted to come back and fight someone and then fight for mm-hmm. the belt, that would have been fine. If Stipe had beat a Blades, a Pavlovich, an Aspinall, and then fought John Jones, I'd be all in. But mm. he didn't. He came off that loss to Engano. And he's just after three or whatever years out fighting for the belt. It's just, no, it doesn't do it for me. Okay. Well, let us know what you'd like to see headline UFC 300. <laughs> well, do you know what? Uh, they, they have. They have. And I'm going to mention a couple now, just to be ooh. nice. Oben Elliott. Our mate Oben Elliott uh, wants to see Brock Lesnar uh, headline. Uh, UFC. I, I liked you, Come the Welsh on, gangster. Oben. Fuck's sake. Yes, UFC oh. fighter, a former cage <laughs> runner fighter, Oben Elliott. Guest, former guest of the show. Fighting soon. Got his... Fighting soon, yes. yes. Uh, so he wanted that. Uh, the Fight Vault said, uh, <laughs> don't want anyone that was on our poster, which included Brock, I think Izzy, <laughs> Leon, and someone else. Uh, Tommy Aspinall versus Stipe, says Steve.t13. One Foot Dude says, uh, Izzy or Leon. Uh, someone else said, Rousey. Uh, uh, hang on, my phone's gone weird. Um Oh, the Don Barry, I don't know if this is they know you or if this is your pseudonym. Like it or not, we're getting Rousey versus Take 3 somewhere That's on not that me. card. <laughs> yes, solidarity, <laughs> brother. Cult of Carl, get Aspen or a huge payday and chuck him in with Brock. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's this? Uh, Jake Davies says, uh, Izzy Pereira 3. Uh, David Hubbard, Izzy Pereira 3. Um... Leon GSP, got a feeling, says Jamoid. Um, uh, That's a great shot. I don't know that it is. I don't think the UFC would give GSP another chance to get a belt and then just walk away because he's done that before with the middleweight belt after he beat Bisping, and I think the UFC weren't too happy about it. So, uh, yeah. But that is, there are a bunch of others out there. These are just a few that I screen grabbed the other day when we thought we were recording. So sorry if I haven't mentioned your pick for UFC 300. But, mm-hmm. you know, keep chatting to us, send in your stuff. We might do another fan uh, Q&A that was great uh, fun. episode two because we really enjoyed that uh, and we really enjoyed all your questions. So please just keep in touch with us and uh, and let us know your thoughts on all the fights going down and, and, and what we're doing on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks ever so much for listening or watching. Um, if you are listening and you've not come over to YouTube and had a little look at what we do, come and have a look at the studio. Um, we're really, really proud of it and we put a lot of work into uh, to putting it together to kind of give you a nice little uh, uh, visual show of, of what we do. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll have some fantastic guests for you this year as well. We were having conversations with lots of fantastic people that are either going to be here in the studio or on the big screen behind us. So uh, we've got great things coming your way this year. Right, we done. We're done. Thanks very much, guys. See you later.